with North Andover's Matt Yacoviello with the uh, Thursday football show sponsored by the Eagle Tribune. Matt is our lineman of the week. Matt, quite a performance against uh, Andover High School. Uh, a little bit of uh, background, 15th ranked team in Eastern Mass. Every single uh, prognosticator in the state picked against you. They'd won you, beat you eight straight times, five of them heartbreakers, including last year in OT. You'd only beat him twice in 57 years. Hadn't played every year, but, but still, you pulled it off. What's it feel like to be a hero in town? It's, uh, it's unbelievable. We don't really care about the projections. We don't pay attention to newspapers. All we worry about is this group of coaches, this group of players. We just want to put our best foot forward. We struggled in the past, we lost a couple of heartbreakers last year, year before, came down to the end of the game. This year, we had to be more conditioned. And we knew once we stepped onto that field that if we wanted it, there was no one that could stop us out there. Andover comes in as they always seem to. They always have a, a who's who of skilled position players and they usually go into college and, and do great things. A lot of people were thinking if, it, if North Andover is going to pull off the, uh, the big upset, it's got to be on the line. How did you guys do it? Uh, uh, our, our guy Dave Willis, the Eagle Tribune uh, expert on line play, said you guys were, were awesome. Yeah, I, I uh, it off. the entire line. We've been practicing so hard. Everyone, we've always lifted together. We've been training so hard. From left tackle to right tackle, everyone, offense, defense, everyone was on the same page. We knew our blocks. We knew what step everyone else was going to make. So we were there. We knew we had to climb the backers, and we knew we would be, get it done. And what, how, how do you keep it going late in the game? You know, it's, a, it's a long game when you're yeah. a big guy like you. Uh, how, how big are you? Uh, 260. Wow. Uh, how do you keep it going in, in the fourth quarter when you're dog tired? It's just, it's all in your head. You just got to know. How good is it going to feel to get that win? Is there anybody on the sidelines, a, a coach who's a, a fiery type who gets yeah. you guys fired up? Our, our, our O-line and D-line coach, Coach Slats, he's, he told us if we need a break, we're going to get it. But deep down, we knew we were not going to get a break. And he's always telling us he's getting us water when we need it. And he's just motivating us at all the time. Just make sure we're ready and make sure we're firing off the ball. Don't mess with the Slattery brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Those are some bad hombres. Having Absolutely. watched them back in the day, uh, yikes. Uh, was there the old uh, cliche, we're not getting any respect, be truthful amongst ourselves in the newsroom? None of us thought you had a chance. Yeah, you know, I, I, can, I can lie and say, yeah, it's going to go to the wire. Everybody thought you, you were going to lose. You lost to the Walsh kid. You lost some good talent. Did you guys really think you could do it? Uh, all the time. We, we never listen to any of the doubters. Doubters, that just fuels the fire. We always thought with this group of guys, with how we've been playing, we've been playing together our whole lives, we always knew deep down, if no one else thought it, if none of the newspapers, none of the media, we always knew we could get it done, and it's great to finally be able to get it done. And w w with all the heartache, oh, geez, you, you, what's going through your mind when Andover makes this uh, textbook beautiful late drive yeah. and scores at the last uh, minute, and it looks like deja vu to the, to the you know, time seven after all that's happened to you over the years. What's going on your mind when they uh, punch it in late? Obviously, that's it was heartbreaking at first, but you know, you got to just think about we play four quarters. The game doesn't end in the third quarter. The game doesn't end on one drive. We got to keep powering through. We got to put that behind us. And ultimately, we just had to keep firing off and get the win. What uh, would you think when you saw the paper next day with, with the huge headline? You, you guys celebrating the huge reverse the curse? Uh, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It's still, I still, it's the win still hasn't set in. I think. I mean, obviously, it's nice to have that win. But this week, we have to get after it. Beverly's going to come in here. They're a great team. We got to learn to stop the run and we got to pound it down them through. Big man, congratulations for reversing the curse. Thank you very much. We're with Lawrence High star Jacob Toledo. Our player of the week for the Eagle Tribune Thursday high school football show. Jacob, what's it, what's it, the week been like after you scored with 10 seconds left for a wild 43 42 uh, win over Methuen High? It's been great. Uh, I went into school and they announced my name. They said uh, congratulations to the team and to Jacob for scoring the winning touchdown. And uh, it was, it's, it's been a good week. and. Just been trying to work hard in practice this week now, waiting for Drake. Take us through the, the play, uh, Jacob. A lot of people said uh, Coach Steve Silva had a, had a real uh, nifty call with the uh, with the screen pass, and, yeah. and, it, and it worked uh, to perfection. No, t take us through. It was a good call, and uh, I think that everybody was just 
they were so pumped. They, we knew we had a real good chance. So uh, when we went out into the play, the linemen blocked perfect. They, uh, they went out in the field and hit everybody that needed to. And I just seen an open space on the outside and, and scored. What's the confidence level uh, playing with a, with a fine quarterback like uh, Nelson Valeria, one of the most prolific uh, quarterbacks in uh, school history and area history? <laughs> the confidence level, it's, it's great because uh, I know he's going to make at least 90% of his passes. You know, he's going to be, he's, I can I can trust him to, to get the ball to me all the time. So, And uh, everyone is talking about your uh, your uh, big score there late, but geez, uh, you guys had fallen behind midway through the third by two TDs. Things weren't looking that promising, and you take it back to the house, a 91-yard kickoff return. What, what happened on that one? Uh, that one, I think I got a little bit of luck and uh, and some good blocking on that one. <laughs> I just seen a little open space on the outside, and I took it. How important is that uh, track speed? Of course, you're well known, uh, running 11-4-0, uh, 100 meters, and on Lawrence's uh, 4 by 100 team, which is uh, one of the state's best and, and the area's best. Yeah. How does the, the track play into uh, your high school football uh, career? It helps a lot. It gives me explosion to make better cuts and stay away from the defenders. And once I break out in the open, it's pretty tough for them to catch me. So. You, you were Kevin Chen, last week's uh, <laughs> Player of the Week. Also, both ran exactly 11.40 yeah. head to head. Who, who wins? Wow. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, competing with him all track, telling him uh, the whole track season. He was fast. I was looking at his times, and he was one of the guys I was trying to keep up with. So that's a close one. <laughs> He's good. He's good. How do you keep the spirits up, uh, Jacob, when uh, you came off a, a real tough loss to Powerhouse Central in, in week one? How do, you, how do you make it so you're not uh, you know, down in the dumps and not really fighting to the end? How did you guys keep the fighting spirit throughout? We were just telling each other to keep our heads up, and uh, and we just got to work from it through, and we can't worry about Central. We got to just imagine like it was week one and played that way. Who are the team leaders? Who, who make sure you guys are fighting through thick and thin and can do stuff like uh, battling back from adversity last week and, uh, and posting a, a big win like that? Mainly the seniors and the captains. Uh, they're the ones that are always telling everybody, you know, keep your head up and uh, keep working hard in practice. Thing, you know. You're not the biggest guy, Jacob. Football's a, a, a big, tough guy sport. Uh, how, how do you uh, manage to uh, be so effective at, at what, what's the height and weight? Well, uh, uh, I've always, you know, I've played football all my life, and I've always been one of the smallest on the team. So I've had to, uh, I had to uh, make up for that, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I just, I try to do what I can to stay away from people. And okay. well, congratulations for our athlete of the week, Jacob Toledo. Welcome back for episode two of the Eagle Tribune Thursday football show. I think we both killed it on our predictions in week one. Nailed it. Yeah. So now we go into this week's slate. Now, generally we would talk about the Friday night games first, but I think we got to look at the two big games of the week. Weirdly enough, we're on Saturday, starting with the game pretty much everybody's talking about. Defending Super Bowl champion Central Catholic against the previous Super Bowl champion, St. John's Prep on at Saturday afternoon at the Prep. This is a big one. Yeah, this is sort of the, the game in the state. Probably any year it almost is, but Central's coming off you know, arguably the greatest uh, team in, in its history, or certainly right up there. If it isn't uh, a number one, the Prep is always there. Good rivalry, local uh, Catholic schools, and just a lot of tradition, a, a lot of talent, so it should, should be a real good one. You know, this has been a crazy game. You know, last year's game, Central hung in, hung in, hung in. Then Johnny Thomas, who's now, of course, over at Penn State, took over and was just a monster. Johnny Thomas isn't here anymore. Johnny Thomas is off of Penn State. So I immediately have to give the edge to Central Catholic. Central Catholic has rolled through two games. They've looked awesome. You know, the preps won two games, too, but... Central just looks like it's hitting on all cylinders. Central, that was an eye-opener against uh, Haverhill. Haverhill was an intriguing club where you thought, eh, they really could be a, a real threat uh, amongst the elite anyway in, in the MVC, and, and Central manhandled them pretty good. I don't think anyone predicted anything remotely like that, so, so that was an eye-opener. 
Only thing the prep does have going for him, two things. Jack Lambert, the, the kid from Groveland, plays like his namesake, namesake with, with the Steelers. He's a player and a half. And they've played a lot tougher schedule. You have to wonder, Central's really rolled, hasn't been threatened. The first time you really play stiff competition, do you adjust well? They're a veteran club, so maybe that bodes well for them, but they're, they're clearly probably going to have their first tough game. Very good point. And, uh, you know, the prep obviously has a quarterback in Oliver Eberth, who's played against Central yeah. twice when he was the handover. Oh, great point. But, you know, as good as they are, and they're good, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely going Central Catholic. They're hitting, you know, we had to find out if they could find a running back. They got Marcus Edmonds, their great linebacker, who's just been an absolute monster at running back. I'm definitely going Central Catholic. Yeah, hey, I, I think it'll be a, a real tight one. Uh, you know, get, maybe Central wins less than a touchdown, 20 to 14, 20 to 15 type of, type of ball game. Interesting, I'm not going that close. But uh, Okay, now we got, we got the game of Massachusetts. We also have the game of all of New Hampshire. We have the perennial powerhouse, Pinkerton, against the team that is just has been looking great. You know, was in the tank two years ago. All of a sudden, Salem is 2-0. Mm -hmm. They've looked great. This is a really cool matchup, yeah. too. Well, we know one thing. If Salem wins, then they are officially the story in New Hampshire football. Nothing else is close. If they don't win, then sort of the same old, same old. Pinkerton's dominating. Maybe Salem's making great strides. Not quite there uh, yet. Can they stop T.J. Urbanic? Yeah. You know, he's obviously a tremendous athlete. You know, he came on last year during their run to the championship game. You mentioned teams that haven't been tested yet. Pinkerton hasn't been tested yet. That, you know, we'll have to see. This is probably the toughest competition they've played so far. Salem is a tough team. I'm featuring John Saratani, their quarterback, in Friday's Eagle Tribune, so check that out. A guy that That's played right. receiver at Central Catholic, now he's quarterback at Salem. This is a really tough team. Do they have it yet? I don't know. But I think we're going to make it really interesting. And also, the last time I featured a uh, underdog was last week against North Andover, and they went in upsets, so who knows? Maybe there you go. Yeah, I, I, I think I'll stick with, with Pinkerton, but uh, again, a, a matchup to... Uh, Watch out for, for Salem, but I don't think I have the guts to uh, to go with them at this point. I'll still stick with the Astros. You know what, Molly? I can't help myself. I got the guts. I'm going Salem. Sorry, Astros. I'm picking Salem in the upset. I can't help myself. Backtracking now. We talked about the big games on Saturday. Bat big games on Friday. Uh, you know, a couple of traditional rivals who haven't played, you know, after the, the realignment. We got Methuen 0-2 going up against the Andover 1-1. You gotta like Andover in this one. They have to be absolutely furious yeah. about losing. Um, you know, Methuen, they're trying hard, but I just don't. I don't think it's yeah. really happening this season. I like Methuen, the one-two punch with uh, McAndrew and Baglieri, yeah, but uh, Andover's got the uh, the explosive passing attack, and, and Kevin Chen's playing some real good ball. So, so I would think you'd have to give it to Andover on that one. Brandon Marty looked absolutely awesome against North Andover. Overshadowed by North Andover looking phenomenal, but he, he looked really good. And he did a lot of it against Bubba Shkalu, who's tremendous. All right, going on. Speaking of North Andover, North Andover's got Beverly. Really tough matchup. Beverly, week one, they had the crazy game. They, were, they fell way behind Haverhill. Then the storms came in, get postponed to the next day. They come back, they tie the game. Then Haverhill scores on the last second. Um... Touchdown. Then they they won last week. Um, I, I I like the Knights. I do too. Knights, Knights, Knights. I just like that uh, the, uh, the the line. They get a they get a bunch of bruisers, and uh, I think uh, Andover's probably still in the whirlpool with, with some of the uh, the wicked uh, hits that were going on in the line there. That I think the the key to them is, is you got Bubba and a terrific line, and that's a pretty good combination. A few of the other games. Brooks opens against Thayer. Neither of us know anything. Uh, I'll go with Thayer. Okay, I'll go with, I'll go with Brooks. Um, okay, so next up we got Timberlane uh, hosting BG. BG's 0-2, but I still think BG's got to win this Yeah. Uh, so is Timberlane, of course. Yeah, I, I, I'll go with BG as well. Yeah. Uh, we got Whittier against Weston, a spread team. Where does Kevin Bradley come up with these guys? He's killing us. It's just to make us look bad. I go to Weston. Wildcats. Going, going uh, Whittier. Uh, 
Okay, then we got Londonderry, 2-0, and hosting North, Nashua North, that is. Nashua North lost to Alvern. And Londonderry's 2-0. and I'm going Lancers. I'm going with uh, Doogie coach Jimmy Lozon, and we're going with uh, the Lancers. Yep. All right, and Greater Lawrence is going to Manchester Essex. Reggie's. Reggie's over Manchester, Essex, Rockport. I think there's four or five other schools uh, involved. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll go Reggie's as And well. uh, wrapping up the Friday slate, we got Pelham at Trinity. Uh, Trinity just lost to uh, to Wyndham. Uh, Trinity. This is it's a tough this is a tough matchup for Pelham that just moved up a lot. Yeah, I, I would think uh, Trinity would be a little tough one. Okay, switching back to Saturday, we got Pentucket. They had a, they were off last week. They lost the opener. Against Ames, hosting Amesbury, St. John's come back and win this one. They're they're ticked. Uh, Jeff Porter's healthy again. St. John's going to come back. You this. would think so. Uh, Amesbury led by uh, interim coach Glenn Guerin, an uh, old friend from uh, from Methuen and, and Timberlane, but uh, go with the St. John's. Yeah, Wyndham going to John Stark. Forget home field advantage. Wyndham's going to win this one. Yeah. They're just rolling. Uh, Brendan McInnes, wow. What a ball player. Uh, our colleague Hector Longo saying he might be the best player in the area. He very well might be. He is one heck of a player. He's really, really good. Uh, right, good old-fashioned Cal matchup. North Reading going to Hamilton Wenham. I'm going to go Hamilton Wenham. You know, they're a tough team. I'll, I'll go with the Hornets. It just seems like they always uh, rush for about 350 yards each week, so I'll go with the Hornets. That's true. Uh, Sanborn's hosting Hollis Brookline. I'm going to go with Hollis Brookline. Yeah, that, that, that's a tough one. It looks like they're pretty evenly matched. Uh, I'll go home field advantage and give it to uh, Sanborn. And finally, Phillips is opening its season as Loomis Chafee. I hate to be that guy, but just like you said about Brooks, I don't know. Yeah, um, who knows? I'll go with Phillips based on the fact they're coming off that, uh, that champion uh, season and Coach Modesti always seems to have the, the boys ready to play, so we'll just go with the recent tradition and, and go with Phillips. I agree. I'm going to go with Phillips too. All right, guys, I said it last week. I'm serious. Go out and watch again. Thanks for watching.